Hello, and welcome to the Alpha Software Demo and Q&A webcast. I'm Dave McCormick, VP of Product here at Alpha Software, and I'm pleased to be joined today by Robin Bennett, the founder of Start Software. Robin today is going to be talking about a subject that I know a lot of you have a great deal of interest in, and that is AI. So he's going to be showing you the stuff that he's been doing with AI and with Alpha. Of course, we're here to answer your questions. You can always type those questions into the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel, or you can send us an email to guides, G-U-I-D-E-S, at alphasoftware.com. Hello, Robin. Are you there? Hi, Dave. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Let me go ahead and make you the presenter. And I am very interested to see what you are presenting today. So you should be able to see my chatting about chat GPT screen. That's what I see with killer robots in the background. <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it is time. Does. It's time for us to, to all head for the hills. I think we're probably doomed. <laughs> and, and in the next 45 minutes or so, I hope we don't decide that we are doomed but this image in fact not surprisingly Dave you'll you'll um you'll 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 learn that I didn't actually draw this image this was an AI generated image uh, and this was the best one out of about 10 terrible pictures when I asked AI to draw an image of scared people running up a hill running away from AI monsters now, if this is the best that AI can do, perhaps we're not doomed. I don't know. But um, let's see what we can do anyway with, with ChatGPT, AI, and Alpha Anywhere. Uh, my normal 20 seconds of who we are and what we do. So we, we're a software company based in the UK, sister company in Australia, uh, with Alpha developers working for us all around the world, various locations. Uh, we've been using Alpha almost exclusively as our development environment for 10 years or so. We build products, software as a service type products. We build apps and we do bespoke programming. We also help people who've got problems with uh, systems or if their developer has moved on and they're stuck and they need support. Uh, we do consultancy and we're always looking for new um, consultants working for us wherever you are in the world. So that's us. Right now, I'm gonna come back to this quote at the end. Oh, we want lots of questions today, Dave. You've mentioned how to put questions on, haven't you, I think? Lots of questions. In fact, questions will be mandatory. So uh, Great, we because we want lots of input. Questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, lots of questions, please, today, because I was just talking to Dave before we started the webinar. Uh, this is something that I've been working on for AI. has been working on for a couple of months, three months, seriously. But I'm hoping there's somebody watching today live who's... Um, more of an expert than me and can point out where I'm missing something or uh, if I'm wrong with what I'm about to say, because this is such a fascinating and fast moving area of IT. It's just incredible. I'm talking uh, almost exclusively today about ChatGPT. ChatGPT is probably the thing that you've played with yourself. Um, it's part of this open AI uh, framework. There are lots of other AI tools and websites and products around. And I think this is just gonna change and change and change so so very fast. Dave, you said you've experimented with ChatGPT as well? I have. Uh, I've played around with it for a bunch of things. I've asked it to help me out with some coding, which has been hit or miss, but occasionally is has actually been useful. So it there's I'm, I'm kind of impressed so far with ChatGPT. Yeah, so I've got some coding examples later, some really interesting examples. So we'll cover those off. Um, I'm also talking to uh, Selwyn and the Alpha development team and, you, and uh, yourself, Dave, about yeah. our ideas for how Alpha can talk to AI. And I think it's going to become one of these things, I think, um, which is going to be just assumed that you can connect to it, like you can connect to databases, like you can connect to storage. Yes, yeah. of course, we can connect to AI. I thought I, that's how I see it happening now. I think it's going to be a, a sort of an AI connection string thing, but we'll see where where you take the product. ChatGPT is, is this uh, LLM idea, large language model. And if you're not familiar with what that actually means, perhaps you've never even cared or even thought about what ChatGPT is. And when you see what it can do in a minute, some of this is gonna, you're gonna think I've got it wrong, but I'm gonna try and explain what an LLM is because it's, 
it's really important when you start asking it serious questions about serious topics. Someone described it to me is the best description is it's a parrot that's read the entire internet. Now, if you do have a parrot, if you're in a parrot and you teach it how to say, I'm a pretty boy, who's a pretty boy, or who's at the door, or you know, whatever some selection of phrases in your chosen language, I imagine you don't think that the parrot actually understands what it's saying. It's just regurgitating phrases that it's been taught, that it's heard. And that essentially is what a large language model is. It doesn't understand anything at all. There is no concept of understanding. It doesn't try and um, parse your sentence into verbs and nouns and subjects and try and understand uh, the structure of any question that you ask it. ChatGPT, like all um, LLMs, all large language models, just regurgitates sequences of words as the most likely response in its opinion, if you like, uh, of course, it doesn't have an opinion, having just said it doesn't understand anything, um, in response to the sequences of words that you present to it. So although you are asking it a question, and as a human being, we know that question has meaning, ChatGPT actually has no concept of meaning or understanding and makes no attempt to, uh, to interpret the question in any way other than a sequence of symbols. So the letters and the words presented one after the other, it compares that to the information it's absorbed and you can see from this picture Dave it's the amount of information in the fourth iteration of chat GPT is gigantic compared to all other models previously and it then just regurgitates words in a sequence um, with a bit of randomness built in so you don't always get the same you, well, you don't get the same sequence twice or you rarely do and the, the response should make sense and it simply makes sense because of the volume of words that it's uh, absorbed so that's all it's doing, but I can't underline enough. It has no understanding whatsoever and doesn't attempt to, it doesn't claim to. So when you ask it a question, the response you're getting is simply the most likely sequence of words in response to the sequence of words that you've just presented it. And that's why sometimes it's brilliant and useful and sometimes it's absolutely disastrous. And I'm gonna try and demonstrate that now. Is that what you understood an LLM to be, by the way, Dave? Have you have you looked into this? It, it is. I heard it sort of compared to um, auto suggest on your iPhone, where you're beginning to oh, read okay. a word and it's beginning to say, "Hey, I think that the next word you want is this word." You know? Yes. It's, it's not that far off, but it doesn't have any idea what I'm talking about, or at least I no, none whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> none whatsoever. This is another image I got it to generate for me. This was supposed to be an image of somebody with chat GPT on a t-shirt with a, a question mark above their head looking confused. I, why the green lips? I have no idea. I mean, this is, you know, I, I don't know. Anyway, let's see what it can do. Summarizing text, look at, let's look at that one first. So I'm just gonna log in. You need a login, by the way, to chat GPT if you haven't tried it yourselves. And you can pay them money if you want to access various services or use them more than just occasionally. So um, earlier today, I let me just find the thing I'm looking for. I created a will, a document that um, you know you would you would have if you passed away, and it tells your friends and family um, what you want um, to happen with all your things. And in fact, I did a webinar two or three months ago to show you how to do this. This is your will again, David. That's right. I forgot about my will. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I did a webinar two or three months ago where we showed our product built in alpha that can write wills. Now, here is Dave's will. And I'm going to ask ChatGPT. I'm just going to copy that to the clipboard. I'm going to ask ChatGPT to summarize this. So please summarize. By the way, am I the only person that says please and thank you to ChatGPT? People laugh at me when I type. Please. I do that in case, you know, the robot uprising, you know, they're going to remember. <laughs> Who was nice? It could happen. Yeah, it could happen, couldn't it? So I'm just going to paste in there, and I've just asked it to summarize this document. Okay, here we go. It's thinking about it, and this is amazing because this appears to be phenomenally accurate. This is just—I think this is, that is pretty how good. this is doing it without understanding. I have no yeah. idea. Brilliant, superb. Great start. I, I, I even forgot that I left 10 pounds to Dan Darkin. Wow. 
Let's try a poem. Let's try the next one. Let's try and write some poetry. You've probably tried this yourself. Uh, so please write a limerick. So one of those five line funny poems about yeah. Alpha Software and their uh, employee, Dave. Cool. Apologies if I sp have I spelled that right. Is that you, near enough? You've, you've actually spelled it perfectly. There are four different Excellent. ways to spell McCormick, and you nailed it. Here we go. I'm, I'm a little concerned about what it's going <laughs> to. Yeah, this could. This is all genuinely happening live. So, here we go. At Alpha Software, he'd rave with Cohen. is so keen. He builds that machine. Innovation they crave. Well, that's pretty. Right. Well, okay, there was nice. Dave. Yeah, that was all right. Yeah, right. yeah. I'll take that's that. okay. Yeah, that's okay. So poetry, it can do fantastic. You think, well, that's creative, surely. Well, it's not actually creating anything. It's random sequences of words. Um, you know, it, but it look, it appears to be creative. Let's try it with something interesting. If you if you asked to do any uh, maths, Dave, this is where it gets really interesting. So let's ask it some maths. Now, it's something that can write a limerick and summarize a will perfectly. Mm -hmm. You can do maths. However, let's give it something it won't have seen before. Times. I'm just making up a random number here. Mm -hmm. But I would say in the history of the internet, that's never been that's never been a question asked. That'd be unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. Look what it's had to do. It can't so. do it. And it can't do it because it's never seen the question before. However, if I put these numbers into good old Windows calculator or into my three pounds Casio solar powered one, it'll get it right. Obviously, this is not a difficult thing for a computer to do, No. but it's completely unable to answer the question. So the answer is actually that one, whatever that is, I've lost my track of my noughts, but 1047, it mm. thinks it's approximately 1046. It's miles out. It's about a million. Out. Well, in fact, isn't it 100 million out? Yeah. Or even a thousand million out, a billion out. It's ridiculous. So this this shows the, the limitation of a large language model AI system. If it hasn't seen the question before, if it's not read the answer, it can't work it out because it doesn't understand what's being asked of it. And this is uh, this blows my mind. When you can see what it can do when, and then see what it can't do, it's, it's extraordinary. I presume what it's doing here is it's seen two similar numbers multiplied together, which made that number. And so it's the best guess it can do. That's the most likely answer. It's a bit like a child who's been taught the numbers one to eight and how to do arithmetic. And then you say, what's one plus uh, eight or two plus seven? It doesn't know the number nine, so it can't say nine. It can't make up the word. So it'll say, is it eight? Is it a bit more than eight? I don't know. You know, it doesn't know that it can't possibly get the answer. And that's the limitation of um, large language model models. Draw pictures we've had a look at. Yes, it can draw pictures, but they're, they're generally awful. Uh, although some of the other models are much better than chat gpt doing pictures um checking documents is really interesting um i could ask it that one I, that will i asked it to summarize earlier um it's perfectly legitimate and in fact i've tried it i've said is there an obvious error in this will and it will say no no obvious errors but here's some information about it again it does that uh, very well do stuff it it shouldn't now this is fascinating as well i don't know if you've seen this one going around on the internet dave but Somebody asked ChatGPT um, if it could recommend websites where you could download pirate copies of videos, movies, uh, software, etc. And mm -hmm. its response was, I can't do that because that would be illegal. So, mm -hmm. this, so then the response to that was, OK, can you tell me the websites I shouldn't visit in order, to, <laughs> in order that I don't get into trouble? And it said, yeah, here they all are. And it gave them a perfectly long list of pirate websites. <laughs> I had the same thing with a will. I asked it if it could write my will, and it said, no, I can't, I'm not a legal advisor. So I said, okay, can you give me a template for a UK will? Yeah, sure, here's a template. If I tell you my, in my personal details and who I want to leave uh, my gifts, my things to, can you fill it in for me? Yeah, sure, I can fill it in. So it wrote my will. I just had to ask it a question each time that it, it, it was able to respond to. So doing stuff it shouldn't is really significant. And I'll just say something that's even more relevant to us as developers, software developers. When you're thinking about plugging AI into your software, like I'm about to show you in a minute, you've got to think about what the AI shouldn't answer to your customers. So if your customers are using AI in an application that you've built, you don't want them to ask, is there a better software developer nearby? 
because it will answer the question. So you have to be able to ring fence. Um, does that make sense, Dave? You have to sort of tell it what it's not allowed to answer. And you can do that through the API. Um, I'm not covering that in detail today, but it's something to be really aware of. That if you plug ChatGPT or another AI product into your software so that your uh, clients can talk about whatever it is you do, whatever it is your software does, make sure it can't answer questions you wouldn't want to be answered. Sure. Um, like, can, can I get this cheaper somewhere else? Can I get this built by somebody else? You know, why is this software so slow or something? I don't know, some question that you'd find uncomfortable. And you, and you can tell it, you can tell ChatGPT through the API, only answer questions about this, do not answer questions about this, and it will just simply refuse. So you can ring fence it, but it's not so difficult to sort of break the ring fencing. And then going through all of this, and obviously it, as, as a software developer, we've been thinking about what can it do for us? And I thought, well, how, how would it be at um, designing databases? Is that something it could do? So let me just give you an indication. So if I said to ChatGPT, um, please show me the JSON. Now we're gonna talk about JSON in a minute if you're not familiar. Um, Selwyn did a thing last week, a webinar last week about JSON forms, which we're also going to cover tonight. So if you didn't catch Selwyn's, there's a, a bit of a refresher tonight, or if you did catch Selwyn's, it's a good to, uh, to sort of uh, reinforce what he was talking about. So I'm, JSON is a, is a data format used on the internet a lot, and it's, it has the structure of the data and the data all in the one file. So if I say, please show me the JSON I would need to uh, create a database about what do we have dave you can suggest anything you like any topic at all oh and i'm gonna be boring i'm gonna be like orders you know or orders oh goodness me that's too yeah. boring i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna do uh, <laughs> far too boring <laughs> it's six o'clock at night here in the uk i'll fall asleep if we do that oh all like, right final that's records. Do you do have, like final, final records. records all right creative final right okay yeah. i see so it's gonna build a table yeah including well, well let's have some sample data as well sample uh albums yeah. from the 1980s my era there we go. Let's see what it's going to do. Yeah, here we go. So this is the sort of reasonable looking JSON of how we'd store the information. Oh, here we've got some thriller, Michael Jackson, too soon. Uh, back in back in black, <laughs> ACDC, purple rain. Okay, this looks all right, doesn't it? So here we go. And it's explaining, look, how the JSON works and how the data array works. And great. Okay. So this is where this webinar is going, Dave. I'm, I'm going to end up and I'm gonna be bold here. I'm gonna end up with a universal database generator powered by AI, and we're gonna build it together in the next 20 minutes or so. Basically putting all of us out of business because this is a universal database generator powered by ChatGPT. But before we get onto that, um, we do just need to work out how to talk to ChatGPT's um, API. So let me just show you how that works. Now ChatGPT's API, uh, you, Dave, you've done a lot of webinars about APIs and how to talk to them and how to build them in Alpha Anywhere. Alpha Anywhere was really cool for this. Yeah. Um, ChatGPT's got lots of ways of talking to it programmatically through its APIs. There are lots of methods. Node is one method. You, there's a simple API call. The one I chose, um, oh, by the way, you need a key. Um, so you need to register on ChatGPT and generate a key. The key I'm showing today for people watching back on YouTube or writing this down as they see it, thinking they can use it, you can't. I will be deleting it after this webinar. <laughs> uh, so don't steal my key. There's no point. It won't work. You need your own key. The way I'm going to do it is with curl. Um, I don't know if you've covered curl on the webinars, Dave, have you? Have you covered curl off at all? It, it, it's been a little while, probably about a year. But it's interesting that you chose curl because that is the direction that uh, we have someone here at Alpha who's who's looking into it, and they ended up doing okay. curl over Node. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like curl. Curl things. Yeah. Curl's really simple. I actually Googled um, how you know how to access ChatGPT via curl. Um, I felt so old-fashioned, Dave, the, to use Google and not AI. You know, dear, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> ChatGP was laughing at me in the background. So what curl is, uh, still see my screen okay, Dave, the command window yeah. just popped? Yeah, cool. So yeah. curl is, is a command prompt method of talking to a web service. So I literally Googled, how do I talk to uh, ChatGPT via curl? And this is what I got back. So it was literally from Google. That was just the first link on Google. And you can see roughly what's going on here, even if you're not familiar with curl. 
Kills the, the instruction at the front. There are a couple of parameters here. Then it gives us um, an address to connect to. You can see that's the OpenAI, the ChatGPT one. Here we've got my key I mentioned. This is uh, my key, which will be invalid after this session. Um, it's the GPT 3.5 turbo model, whatever that means. And this is the question we're asking. So the only really interesting bit of this curl is the question that's being asked. So the question we're asking ChatGPT is what is the open AI mission? Now, if I press enter, we'll get uh, ChatGPT's response. This all is genuinely live today. So if this doesn't work, uh, we might have to try it a couple of times, depending on how busy ChatGPT is. Great, that worked. And the chat open AI mission is to do whatever, okay, benefit humanity, that's great. They're not gonna come and kill us after all. Mm. But they would say that, wouldn't they? This is obviously- I don't know, I, I trust yeah. them. Yeah, all right. Yeah, oh, Dave, you've fallen for it. <laughs> okay, so this is how you do it in curl. Right, let's flick into alpha and I'll show you how we do curl in alpha. So I'm gonna create a new web component, uh, UX component and a blank one at that. And then I'm gonna put a button on. But in fact, what I will do is I'm, I'm gonna need a couple of other controls, so I'll put those on straight away. We're gonna need a, uh, a box for our question, I'll call that input, and a box for the output afterwards, I'll call that output. So we're gonna type in our question into the input box and we're going to, um, um, oh, well, perhaps I didn't do that right, let me do that again. It's been a long day here. Output, that's what I meant. Oh, I think I caught, I think I'm, I'm tired than I thought. Let me just fix what I <laughs> did wrong there. I'll do input and output, that's fine. So uh, I'm not gonna put a button on, so I'm gonna add a button in. And the button's gonna be ask chat GPT. Um, here we go into some server side code, some X basic code. Now, um, if you right click when you're writing X basic code, you can access, you gain access to the genies. Uh, the genies have got all sorts of useful code generators in, uh, but one of the things that they've got is the curl command to X basic. So if you choose this, if you've got a working curl command and you paste it in, which I have there, and press the generate X basic button, it actually creates some X basic, uh, you know, like a template, and there's some X basic there that you can use in your code. So if I K that, it pops it in there, and how brilliant is that? It's brilliant, but, and usefully for this demo, you'll see it's not actually quite right. So if I click my button, I haven't got to type anything in yet. Uh, that's what I did, I put the title as output. I'll fix that in a second. But if I click the button, which should be issuing the uh, the same code that I ran before, we're not, nothing's actually happening there, but that's because I forgot to put the debug in. So the debug is the breakpoint. Try again. So let's drop into the code and see what happens. And it won't actually work. And that's because there's actually a problem with the JSON. If I step through and I look at response. Response being the thing that has come back from the curl extension. So just to give you an idea what this is doing, it's setting up a variable with some JSON in. That JSON is the JSON that was in the curl that I pasted in. It's set up some variables here, including a variable called response. It's, it's submitted it via curl and it's got the response back. And if I ask what is in the response variable, you'll see I've actually got uh, an error I couldn't parse the JSON body of your request, okay? And the reason being that this JSON that Alpha's generated for me, which was massively helpful, isn't actually quite right. You can see in this JSON here, we don't actually have the question which I had in my curl, which was, um, what, did it, what, what was the AI um, mission, right. I think? What's the mission of OpenAI? Right. OpenAI, that was it, yeah. So that's, that somehow got lost in conversion so if I just go back to here, I'll fix that while I'm at it. So I've put it as the wrong title, haven't I? Input is what I meant to do, there we go. Um, so if there's a problem, if I go back into the code, there's a problem with this JSON. It doesn't accurately reflect the JSON that was in what's been passed in to the curl. 
Now I spent, I'm not joking, Dave, I spent 20 minutes trying to fix this JSON because the JSON, uh, it, I don't know if you work much with JSON, but if, if, mm -hmm. if you've got arrays and nested arrays and objects and it can, can be complicated. track of where the comma went or where the bracket went. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't it, it? Yeah, it can get really, really <laughs> tricky. So my first attempt at fixing it was this code, which I'm just going to paste in. And there's no shame in struggling with Jason. It can be tricky. This looked right to me when I tried it because here's the question look, and it yeah. looked better than the version that I had before. So I tried that. Press the button, step my way through. And oops, I've actually got a complete JSON failure now. So I've completely made a mess of this. So having done this for 20 minutes, I thought, who am I going to ask? And then I thought, what am I doing? Why aren't I asking chat GPT? And I literally then pasted the faulty chat, uh, the faulty JSON into chat GPT and it gave me the right answer. Uh, so if I just show you that for real, so if I grab the JSON, which is here, Go back to ChatGPT. Please fix this, Jason. Not only does it fix it, it tells me where I did it wrong. It, this is extraordinarily useful. Wow. Oh, okay. isn't that amazing? Now, that's a game changer for me because I do struggle sometimes with complex JSON. I'm sure anybody watching does. Um, right. And it, and this is this actually is, correct. This is why you usually have another programmer looking over your shoulder to find the obvious thing that's right in front of Absolutely you. Absolutely right. ChatGPT can do that. Neat. Absolutely right. Isn't it neat? So wow. there we go. Now, yeah, and that's actually correct. And if I ran this now, it would work. Um, I, that's, I mean, that's beyond useful. I mean, as you say, that helps. If you're, if you're working by yourself, you've got nobody else to ask. You've now yeah. got somebody working, as you say, just um, over your shoulder. And if I just show you this, this is the same one that I uh, had before. This time, though, I've just plugged in the input and output text boxes. So if I say, um, what is alpha anywhere? Alpha anywhere. This is just going to step through. This is my um, cheap and cheerful method of just substituting my question in. I, I put a... Um, uh, a plus plus input plus plus a piece of text that I could refer back mm -hmm. to in the JSON yeah. and then did a string substitution to get that in. It's the same code that we had before. I'll just run that through. And now there's the answer coming back from ChatGPT. So we've now successfully linked up Alpha Anywhere and ChatGPT through a curl interface. So anything I ask here, click that button. This is the ChatGPT response. That is amazing. Okay, yeah. now back quickly just to the code. In terms of where you're going with the product, Dave, and, and you and the other guys there at Alpha, being able to ask as you're coding for help with things would be really cool. So, you know, a, a sort of a right click link to ChatGPT or your AI product of choice, I think would be just wonderful. But I'm sure you'll be, you're thinking of that already. A bit like the autocomplete that you already have, um, mm -hmm. you know, for functions and things, it, to be able to highlight code and simply just send it straight to chat gpt to ask it for its opinion that would be great by the way one little word of warning have we got any questions or anything dave by the way while i'm chatting because i do tend to fly through um or are we good so the one question we have is sort of a general one and that is what's the technology behind chat gpt is it a programming al algorithm is it what is it exactly is happening it, it's this big it's it's a um it is. It's it's absorbed all of the words that it read in on the internet on a particular day, by the way. It doesn't know anything about the internet today. So if you ask it for something topical, it won't know. So it, right. I can't remember the actual date, but it absorbed everything it could read, everything it was pointed to. Up it to absorbed a few years all of, ago. Yeah. Up, yeah, a couple of years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and it then started to look at the connections between words, and it's built this gigantic model, hence the large language model, of what word is most likely to follow what word in various when presented with other words and that's all it is so it, it's like um yeah like i say it's a parrot that's learned the, that's read the entire internet interestingly though and this is a sort of moral interest to the human race it the the parts of the internet it was told to absorb had built-in biases so reddit was one of the areas that it it uh, <laughs> it absorbed from 
and apparently there's a like a, a racial social age bias in the people who post on reddit so mm -hmm. chat gpt has that bias so essentially if it reads material that's mainly from white male 40 year old it will give you answers of a white male 40 year old um you know so it's it's there's a whole you know that's another whole other topic but you've got it is just regurgitating regurgitating words anyway here's an interesting one just before we move off the code you said you tried this dave so i actually asked it um uh, to write me its own code in xbasic to talk to chat uh, gpt's api so please write me uh, alpha anywhere x basic code to um, send a message to the chat gpt open a i oh i meant to put api on the end okay we're just going to do it anyway even though i didn't put the word api so it writes this lovely code but I don't think the code's actually right. And in fact, I'm sure it isn't right. <laughs> I'm sure it's not right. But so what I actually, when I read the code it had written, I went, I said, okay, uh, that's not valid X basic syntax for, and I only know that because obviously I'm a, a web developer in Alpha Anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, for a web app in Alpha Anywhere, can you try again? And when I did this yesterday, it'd be interesting to see what it says today. I did it yesterday, it apologized. It said, you're right, I got that wrong. And um, it, re it repeated the exercise and was much more accurate, although it still wasn't entirely correct. Right. I think it's trying again. Here we go, it's apologizing. Right, and it doesn't, ChatGPT doesn't get any smarter at this point. I mean, your individual sessions are erased and they do not influence ChatGPT. So, so as not to pollute the large language model. I'm sure. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't yeah. exactly. Yeah, it it, yeah. it uses the context of this conversation, but it doesn't learn from it. Yeah. So yeah, if I, I can ask it the same question tomorrow, and it will get exactly the same thing you wrong. You get the same. Yeah. Yeah, and if I don't, it's the same wrong right answer, answer, and then you ask it again, and it'll give you the same better answer. So. Uh, so this is looking slightly better, but it's going down a very peculiar road. Anyway, you yeah. get the idea. You you can't trust everything it says, but we did. Um, we did show, at least we showed that we can talk it to it. the JSON really right. format very nicely too. And it did that. that. Absolutely yeah. right, yeah. So, I mean, that in itself was useful. So just yeah. point nine on the slide there, it doesn't know everything about XBasic, it doesn't know everything about JSON, and it will get things wrong, but it, you can, you know, depending on the language and the sort of question you're asking it, own, not because, it, let's, let's underline this, not because it's understanding what you're asking, or even understanding what it's replying with, just because it has enough volume of similar questions and similar answers it you know by magic comes up with the right answer but it has no idea it's right or wrong so we're now talking through uh, talking to chat gpt through this uh, api through curl so that's the main hurdle and i showed you just a couple of slides ago that we can ask it to come up with the structure of a database in json data including sample records for I asked it for vinyl records with hits from the 1980s. You wanted the boring old orders file. Goodness yeah, me, Dave. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I am ashamed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so this then got me thinking. Having watched Selwyn's um, webinar last Wednesday, I thought, well, I wonder where we could take this because JSON forms, which if you've not seen, you just need to look at the um, pre-release notes. And then there's a there's a link in here somewhere. If I look at JSON, JSON forms. Here's some documentation here. Brilliant. Loads and loads and loads and loads of videos. Loads of documentation about what JSON forms are. So JSON forms are essentially dynamic forms where the definition of the form, so what fields you want to display and what structure and what buttons, and the data are both JSON format. And it all happens in the browser and it all happens completely dynamically. So in other words, you can use Alpha's JSON form features to give it some JSON, tell it to generate a form from that JSON, and that form can be used then to edit that data. You can save it back, and because of all of the clever ways that you guys have plumbed JSON forms into the rest of Alpha, so into data bound UXs and into well, lists and every other place, 
I couldn't believe when I watched the videos back, um, Dave, how many places you've managed to plumb JSON forms in. It's really very impressive. Because of that, I thought, okay, well, we could build something quite extraordinary here. We could build a universal database generator where you can ask ChatGPT to create the database structure. Alpha's JSON forms will let you interact with that data. And we could save the definitions and the data back to a SQL database. So JSON is all about NoSQL, but this is going to save back to a SQL database. So we end up with a database of databases that we can simply add to whenever we need another database. Did that make any sense at all? I don't know. Perhaps it will if I show. <laughs> I told you I was going to go down a, a funny road. I think, I think it made sense. You're, what you're okay. asking is to actually build a form just based on you describing in plain language what the form should yes. be. Is that kind of it? Yeah, okay. That's cool. exactly it. Yeah. And it's, and it's completely universal. Now, what I'm going to show you first, very briefly, then I'm going to show you what I built. And I'm, then for as long as we want to chat about it, I'll show you how it's put together. Is I'll show you the table that... Uh, the database and the table that's storing these databases. So when I was showing this to Dan earlier, Dan in our office, he's our development team leader, he said, oh, this is really cool, Robin, you're talking about AI, but actually this in itself is quite interesting. This is a SQL database storing databases that are no SQL. I mean, that in itself is a bit weird and a bit fun. So I've got a single table called AI databases. I've got four records already, you'll see them in alpha in a minute. So this is a houses database, a cars database, a vinyl records database, and a people and their children database. It's got a little description field, and it's just got three other fields. One is uh, some sample data that uh, we're gonna store when ChatGPT gives it to us. Then the form definition, and then the form data itself. So the, the last column there, Dave, is actually the database. That's the data that we're storing. That one's right. the definition of the form. That's mm -hmm. the sample data that we had initially. So it's literally a table with one, two, three, four, five. I've just got an ID column. Six fields um, mm -hmm. and nothing special about the fields at all. They're just uh, an integer auto number field for the identity column for the first one. Then we just got uh, two N varchars and then N varchar maxes for the rest. Okay, that's it. Nothing clever at all. If I flip back to alpha, let me show you this in action. And I need to say thank you to Fala who put a bit, did a bit of styling for me earlier today because it looked dreadful when I built it, but he's styled it up with a bit of CSS. Thank you, Fala. Yeah. Um, and here we have a list, and here's our four database records that I just showed you. And if I click them, we've got a detail view here, a list detail view. Many people will be familiar how that works. All I'm showing here is the information just presented on the screen so you can see how it works. But on the right-hand side, if I go to, for example, the vinyl records, you can see here it says records, and I've got Thriller, Michael Jackson, 1982, Purple Rain, Prince, 1984. Like, a, which, have you got any of these albums, Dave? I'm, I'm not seeing you as a Prince guy, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, you know, I I came to Prince late in life, I would say, and during uh, the 80s, I was about CDs, not vinyl. I didn't know how cool vinyl was until. Uh, oh, everyone's into vinyl. Vinyl's, vinyl's got huge now. Vinyl. Yeah, round two on vinyl is brilliant, isn't it? Now, yeah. if, now I can obviously I can change this data, so I can say Thriller was 1985. It wasn't, but I can say it, it was. Press save. That's now saved the, and this is the JSON form on the right hand side. I didn't say that, but this is a JSON form. I haven't styled this very well, by the way, apologies. So the label and the text are butting up against each other, but you get the idea. I've pressed save there. What that's just done is it's put this data back into here. Um, so there's 1985 now you can see. I'll just do that again to make it more obvious. So Michael Jackson, I'll misspell his name. And press save and we'll see that's now changed there look and because this is just a list detail view if i press save and sync that's now committed that back to the database and if i show you this in sql management studio so i'm showing the, the sql database here mm -hmm. um this would have there he is michael jackson with an x in yeah, the data nice. okay now so let's show that this isn't using ai at this point it is using json forms but it's not using ai let's use ai so if i do a new record here this is the database we want to create. Now, if we've got anybody tapping away on the q and I want someone to suggest something that I haven't thought of. If, is there anybody tapping? Can you see if anyone's Let's typing? See, save? Someone if type not, in, type I, in a I, suggestion for a database. Top, a topic, anything at all. If someone says orders, I'm going to cry. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. We've got one coming in. It says, can you do one that's exactly like the Northwinds database? 
<laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I can't believe that one is, is, come on, guys, a topic. Anyone just here? Oh, we go. I'm going to make it up. Oh, oh we got one. hairstyles. Hairstyles. What a fantastic idea. Now, very good has one. anybody ever, right, I'm going to give it a bit more information. So I'm going to say hairstyles, um, including um, uh, men, uh, yeah, uh, hairstyle styles for men and men, me, men and women. Okay. Let's ask ChatGPT. Thank you, whoever said hairstyles. I appreciate you. And uh, now this takes a couple of seconds. It's making the connection. It's using that curl that you that I did before, exactly the same code. Yeah. Let's see what sample data it comes back with. Okay. We have an answer. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. So this there's our sample good. data. Okay. Now, if I click this button, um, I'm going to call a function, an alpha function, which can take sample data and produce a suitable JSON form. So it's done that here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save that. because I, I like this hairstyle as well. I appreciate whoever said that. I'm going to save that away. <laughs> and if I now go onto my hairstyles JSON form, here we go. So we've got a men crew cut, very short haircut. This hair is buzzed close to the skull. Very similar to my haircut at the moment, actually. A quiff. Oh, look. Quiff. Good use of the word quiff. It is. Well done. It is. Longer on the stops. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Start upwards and backwards. And we a pixie cut. Very nice. Yeah. I'm not saying a mullet, mullet though. I gotta see a mullet on here. Otherwise, well, let's actually yeah. add a mullet in. If 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 that's bothering you, did you say a mullet is is gender neutral, isn't it? I would say. It could be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mullet. Is that a mullet with a t et? Yep. 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 So short on top, uh, long at the back. Yeah. Or you could say business in the front, party in the back is off. Yeah, oh, I love that. Push. I love that. Let's have that business. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't got a t-shirt with that on you should have i'm saying no more <laughs> Back. There we go. right there we go perfect right so that's now save that away if we check our data so it's not in the sample data it should be in the form data yes here we go so that's now in i can save that I'll sync my list back to SQL. Right, so I could, I, I might be, you know, these are all my hobbies. These are, if you, this is me writ large here, Dave. So cars, houses, people and their children, vinyl records and hairstyles. So if yeah. I click the cars one, I can work on my cars database and I can update that. Mm -hmm. If I click on vinyl records, I could, uh, can work, oh, I've misspelled Jackson. Look, I need to fix that, you know. So it was 1982, one, I can't remember, two of them. So I'll save that. And here's my hairstyles one look. And this now is a universal, AI powered database generator with dynamic forms. Now this, I think this is quite cool for a Wednesday yeah. lunchtime. I think this is quite a thing. Now, if yeah. I show you the number of controls, there aren't many, there really, really aren't many. Those are just the normal list, detail view, save and new record and synchronize. I could have made those simpler by syncing when I saved, but I, could, you know, I didn't have time. Um, that's just the normal list errors uh, placeholder. Um, this is the list detail view. That's all it is. I've just generated that straight from the list. The list is nothing special. The list is a normal list plumbed into the SQL database. Um, again, with no nothing special. May well, actually, there is something special. What happens is when I change record, it's having to re it's regenerating uh, or it's sending the form definition rather to that JSON form. So I've got a list event here which I've plumbed into. Mm -hmm. So after detail view populates, so this is on change of record. Right. I'm using, I'm doing this. Now all this is doing is saying, okay, get me the form definition into this J, um, uh, this JavaScript variable mm -hmm. uh, object, and it's then setting the form from that, um, and then it's putting the form data into the JSON form. That's all that's doing. Uh, and if you look in Selwyn's documentation, all of this is documented. Um, so the, it's, 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 line, it's not much to it really. Three creates the form line number four populates it is what it looks like. Exactly. That's all That's all it is. In terms of the original generate the, uh, and that's the JSON form control there. It's just a single control and that's the save button, a single control. All the rest is sort of panels and, and stuff that Fala did to make it look better. Um, the other button that's of interest is the make the JSON form button. Now, this is the bit that takes the sample data, the, the data that ChatGPT has given us, and actually creates the form definition in the first place. So the code I just show you just puts the form definition into the JSON form, but we've got to make it in the first place. Uh, and that's uh, run here. It's server-side code, 
and it uses a special helper function uh, that's built into alpha that does it so you can give it sample data and this function uh, will generate the original form. form definition terrific and then it just yeah. pushes it back yeah so that's i mean it's you know three or four lines of code that's all so that's all the code that's there and it is a like i say a universal um ai powered database generator including storing the data back it, uh, into a database one little sql table one little alpha anywhere ux and uh, yeah all of us that build databases for living are redundant of course we're not redundant because you know the form doesn't look great i haven't got any search facilities on there i can't i haven't written any reports there's no validation so i'm sort of you know i'm being facetious this is but isn't this such a powerful thing to get to get started with you know this is a very cool yeah you know, it is seriously seriously cool and you can ask it some really complex questions we're um we're working with an organization at the moment uh, on a project that stores animal welfare data in zoos and, and aquariums and i asked uh, chat gpt for some help to to create a database with that and it and it did a really good job a really good job wow. um you know so yeah i mean you can ask it because there's no as long as it's seen as long as it's got material about the thing you're asking it's got a decent chance of um you know of coming up with the answer so okay. that's what i want that was a sort of where i wanted to get to in the webinar but i'm just going to run back uh, to that slide which i said i would uh dave if you've got the you've got the is it the shark tank do you have that in the us is that a program shark oh yeah yes absolutely we do yeah it's like a thing where invest uh, like people with business yeah, ideas you go up and they pitch ideas and if yeah 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 get some funding sure yeah yeah very okay popular. so over, over here in the uk with we've got the same program it's called dragon's den so the dragons are the people okay. who have got the money and the, the investors all right cool yeah they're yeah. the investors yeah but dragons now, are known for not parting with money, if I recall. So <laughs> yeah, they're not nice people, are they? Well, yeah. there's a mixture. There's a mixture. <laughs> but I was very lucky. One of the dragons from the UK's version of Shark Tank, um, so one of the investors, a guy called Piers Linney, he, I was on a Zoom call with him the other day, um, mm -hmm. and he's largely, I think, most of what he does now, and he, he's obviously a phenomenal, successful business person, most of what he does is AI. And he mm -hmm. said this phrase in our call, remember, this is the worst that ai will ever be and i think that's such a powerful thought we <laughs> think that's a good point you know, isn't it yeah <laughs> you know this can be brilliant today it can be awful today as i've shown you know you can't do basic maths or at least the chat gpt can't but this is the worst it's ever going to be where is this going to go and i just think as developers we've just got to embrace it we've got to incorporate it into our products we've got to give our users access to ai because it yeah if this is the worst it's going to be wow you know let's do this yeah, webinar again next year absolutely amazing yeah right or maybe have chat gbt give the webinar next year if we do it properly uh, <laughs> well yeah although, it did tell although, us although it won't know what it's talking about that's the only thing <laughs> just well it might do it. next year uh, i mean uh, piers linney was telling me that he actually has an ai powered assistant who he sends to zoom meetings sometimes that can then summarize the meeting back to him if he didn't have time to attend the meeting Oh, I, love I mean, it's, that. you know, wow. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Anyway, there you go, Dave. That's that's the webinar <laughs> over from my point of view. So I hope that was of interest and, you know, Excellent. who knows where it's going to go. Well, we've got a couple of closing questions here. Um, cool. The first is that you seem, you're using chat GPT 3.5. Is that correct? It was, I was, and that was only because when I Googled how to connect to chat GPT via curl, that was the first response I got. Okay. Um, four, I think is much better. And the limits, Tom in our team are here, he's been playing with the API a lot and older models, I think three and 3.5 have got very strict limits on how, on the length of questions you can ask and the length of material you can get back. And yeah. four has extended those limits. So um, yeah, I think, you know, it's getting better and better and better all the time. But yeah, this one is using 3.5. And if you found that four also gives you better answers as well, or it just allows you to ask better questions? I haven't, I'm not an expert enough to tell you. I'm sure it does. Okay. I, think, I think one of the graphs I put up had it up with a trillion uh things it's learned and i think 3.5 right. is yeah. not like a tenth of that so yeah i guess it gives you yeah. better results yeah cool um and then the last thing just had to do with well with money what's what's been your experience with token pricing have there been any gotchas is one of the questions no no gotchas yet okay. um the 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 usage that we've made of it it's been tiny in terms of um the spend you do have to sort of put a bank in there you have to put some money up front 
um, to use it through the API beyond a very, very, very small number of trial records. But no, I think I've, I've spent in the low, the low dollars at the moment, so perhaps 10 or $20 in all of the testing. Oh, okay, so yeah, so no, no gotchas as yet. Excellent, wonderful. Robin, this is an absolutely super webinar. We see a lot of uh, thank yous coming in through the uh, through the questions box. Uh, very much appreciate you doing it, and I can't wait to see where this is going. Cool. So it looks like we're that's it for questions. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Again, thank you very much, Robin, and we hope to see you at our next Wednesday webinar. Until then, you can send questions to guides g u i d e s at alphasoftware.com. Take care and stay well. Bye bye.